to do a segment we'll call Speed Round. So I'll just okay. throw some topics at you. You tell me whether you think that they are overrated or underrated. Maybe you can explain a little bit. Yep. You can pass if there's a topic that you don't <laughs> want to address. Um, we, we heard a, a comment out here from somebody talking about augmented reality and virtual reality. What is your belief? We're going to be talking a lot about technology this morning. What's your take on virtual reality, <coughs> augmented reality? Do you believe it's overrated or underrated as a, as a learning uh, tool? Virtual reality, overrated. Augmented reality, underrated. Okay, explain that. What's the difference? Um, uh, virtual reality, I think, has very niche opportunities. People walking around with the giant goggles. Yeah, like on. that's the last thing you want to see in a restaurant, right? And why would I augment <laughs> the re why would I augment the reality of somebody already in the reality? So right. that's sort of my logic there. Um, those kind of pieces. Um, and then uh, augmented or why would I virtualize? Augmented reality I think can be um, extremely effective at the performance support component that sort of eliminates the, peop the need for people to learn. Mm -hmm. So that whole conversation about available at the moment of need or in the context of where and when I need it, uh, that's why I think it's underrated. Okay. I think it's still immature though, but I think it's underrated as its potential. Okay. Um, the concept of ROI of learning, you know, that's something sort of like an evergreen topic for, for folks in learning and development. Always trying to prove that, that business case. Do you feel like that oh. ROI as a number is overrated or underrated? Wildly overrated. Okay. Explain that. I love that people can make a living on chasing it, uh, but um, for me, it's, uh, I have this big belief, and people that know me know it, I almost spend no time doing ROI. It's all on the front end. It's all when I'm working with whoever my stakeholder is, defining what the success measures are up front, making sure it's tied to where the business wants to go, and as long as it's seen as tied tightly to where the business wants to go, and s measures of success are clearly defined up front, almost never do I get asked to do an R any kind of ROI work on the back. Yeah, you've lost already if that's a... Uh, yeah, uh, my attitude is if someone's asking you what's the ROI on the program, what they're really saying is, I'm not sure this adds value to what it is we're trying to accomplish as a business, mm -hmm. so justify that it does. Which means you got a fundamental disconnect problem upstream mm -hmm. in why you're doing it to begin with. So. so if somebody's caught in that situation, how would you suggest they sort of, I mean, obviously work upstream, but what are some practical tips for how Well, I think you got to answer the question, but I also think you got to um, recognize that it's very hard to answer that question directly. Because, you know, depending on the position you want to take, you can discount it pretty readily and say, well, you know, we, didn't, we ran a promotion at the same time, so, uh, you know, that didn't work, so the decline in sales can't really be tied to what I did in training, right? Just as equally as you would say, we went up 5% in sales, and it was because of this training. Oh yeah, there was this promotion that went on at the same time that did mm -hmm. lift sales. Largely, if you're tied to the business, most of the time they're not really going to care. Yeah. Right. All right, next one. Starbucks coffee, overrated or underrated? <laughs> overrated. <laughs> Overpriced. <laughs> Yeah, and you said something interesting when we were, uh, that actually McDonald's I have is the, to say that. Well, so. you do, I know. It's and I don't drink coffee, period, so. <laughs> so you're actually not qualified to answer I'm not the even question. a stakeholder, right, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, just, I'm um, slightly, I have to be biased, first of all, yeah. yeah. And then second, I don't really care about coffee other than what drives sales. Yeah. yeah. But McDonald's is actually one of the, is the largest? Largest. Seller of coffee. So we sell more coffee than Starbucks, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the concept of a CLO, do you believe, you believe that's overrated or underrated? You kind of got to do the company line here too, I know. Yeah, well, no, I could, I could actually be critical of myself. Um, that's a tough question to answer because um, the dimensions of it, I think, are wildly overrated, where it's a bit about um, sort of self-promotion in the organization. Um, and I think it's uh, underrated as um, a strategic input to the business strategy. So, is that? Yeah, what's that, to, what, what do you mean, when you said self-promotion, what do you mean of the, the person in the role who's just sort of building themselves up or, or more broadly than that? No, I think it's more um, like, I don't, you know, maybe this isn't true today, but my observation was before I was actually called the CLO, and even now as a CLO, is it's a, there's a bit of a rationalization exercise for the position, 
right? Trying to elevate it to be, you know, to the, old, level. the seat yeah. at the table conversation, you know, okay, we're there now, we have nothing to say, but that's a different one. Um, but getting the seat at the table kind of piece, well, if I have a C next to my name, I'm the chief, then you know I, I elevate my status. Got it. Right. So I think that piece is is overrated or driven out of uh, the learning profession psyche period about being pretty insecure about being what respected we do. by the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. So the your take is you know, as long as you have the role, whether you actually have the title or not, is kind of beside the point. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. What's um, underrated is the influence. Okay. So let's. We've got a couple minutes left for our conversation here. If we can kind of turn your, your eyes ahead um, and sort of as you look at the future of learning. Um, what, and you, you mentioned you just actually did this with the 30 under 30 session, I think at Maisie's conference yeah. uh, last week. You know, what's been your advice for people who are entering this career or you know, have a, 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 you know, a pretty long window of time that they're going to be doing this? What advice do you offer them? Um, I, I tell them to, um, be prepared that whatever the, they're doing today could become completely obsolete tomorrow. I mean, uh, it, it, if you look at, um, I don't know, if I look at instructional design circa 1992, 93, you know, the thinking pattern's probably the same. The solution set is completely different. Um, you know, the organizational strategic enablers around whether people need to learn something or not is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, hanging your hat on, I, I'll never forget, I sat in a meeting and Mark Rosenberg, I don't know, this is probably 2000, 2001, somebody on my team, he came in and spoke to my team and somebody raised their hand and said, you know, I want to be an instructional designer, what advice do you have for me? And he said, move to India, right? So um, <laughs> it was kind of, at the time, yeah. that was sort of the trend that was going on. But I think it points to this notion of, um, Try not to hang your hat on one thing um, and be about business performance and human performance first. Yeah. And you'll probably go a long way. Yeah. There's sometimes there will be an instructional design component, but if that's where you kind of put yourself in that. Same yeah. thing with the technology component. Yeah. Same idea. If you think it's the answer to everything and you're running around with a hammer looking for nails, um, you tend to become obsolete because you run out of nails. Okay. All right, so we are going to turn to technology here in a minute, so I want to finish with that. I mean, what technology are you perhaps most excited about for, for learning and development as you look ahead? Or is most excited an over, <laughs> over, uh, you know, oh, overstatement? Most excited could be overrated. <laughs> um, back to that comment. Um, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not um, I think, you know, augmented reality, I think has a tremendous amount of potential. I think, you know, I think, there's new stuff. There's always been new stuff. There'll always be new stuff. So I try not to get really excited about technology. Mm -hmm. um, I think making the things that we have really work and effective um, and do it at the lowest cost possible mm -hmm. is probably, um, I, I don't know, that's where I spend a lot of my time. So I don't spend a lot of my time getting excited about technology because yeah. I haven't really seen anything that has got me excited in the last 20 years, probably. Yeah, well, and as you said at the beginning, it's, sort of, it's about human performance and, and, and about us as human beings and our behavior. A lot of that doesn't change. Technology may amplify certain aspects of that, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily change it. I'd say in general, you know, the, the ubiquity of the internet and the, ac the ability to create access to information and resources for people, without talking about a specific platform, um, has, probably been one of the biggest disruptors around the learning function as a whole. Mm -hmm. And I think that it'll continue um, on stuff we don't even think about. All this AI kind of conversation that's going on right now uh, is basically going after displacing people's need to think. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so what does that leave people to do? Um, I think is the challenging question for us as learning professionals yeah. uh, around where it's going to be. Because that's going to happen to us you know, because it should from a business perspective, who wouldn't want to do that? Um, you know, the question is then what's the value of, of what people actually do or the opportunity really of what people can do um, that we're not doing today as an organization? Yeah, that's a big question. It is. Yeah. Well, please join me in thanking Rob for being a, a keynote here. Thanks.